My name is Catherine Gian with the Pacific Alliance to Stop Slavery. I did register um, online. I'd like to clarify some misconceptions that the business community may have about these criminalization policies. First of all, California statewide has not implemented a sit and lie law, just the city of San Francisco. Berkeley considered it and they launched a study out of the University of California, Berkeley, which found that there is no meaningful evidence to support arguments that sit and lie laws increase economic activity. And they certainly do not help homelessness, as we found in San Francisco. And your question earlier about Seattle, how effective their sit and lie law was, well, I brought up in my uh, previous testimony that their law was different because it applied to muggings, preventing muggings and assaults in an abandoned area. Yes, it was a commercial area, but it was an abandoned commercial area. Okay. But to answer your question, Council Member Harimoto, there was no effect that that sit and lie ordinance had on homelessness in those areas. In fact, or on the homelessness. In fact, and this is researchable, in fact, it was only improved the homeless situation when the city implemented Housing First programs. Now, if we're going to model our uh, laws after Seattle, let's model after all of what Seattle has done. They have implemented tent cities. They have increased their budgets for housing, low-income housing, as well as increased their minimum wage to a livable wage. Um, there's a lot of disinformation going on, but let's not create the same mistakes that other cities have made before us. That would just be a waste of time and a waste of money. And I work in criminal law, criminal system, and the juvenile justice system. And I have to say that you do not want to create more criminal laws that put nonviolent, peaceful people who are extremely poor and have no resources into prison. Not only does it clog up our already overburdened pr prison and court system, it is unethical and traumatic. And it also has proven in tests and studies that it actually deepens and worsens the time that person spends as a homeless person. Because why? Even a petty misdemeanor can prevent somebody from obtaining a loan, if even especially a student loan, if they want to go back to school, getting a job, and also the societal uh, stigma of being having a criminal record. Okay, So if you want to help the homeless, this is not part of a comprehensive plan. You have models for comprehensive plans that have been proven to work. Criminalizing the homeless is not part of a comprehensive plan. It is unconstitutional. It d divides our community between classes of rich and poor. Back in the old days, Waikiki, so, some people, some business people tried to establish Waikiki as a whites-only area. Okay? I don't know if you remember that in our history books. Let's not do the same thing with regard to the poor. Let's use these comprehensive plans that other cities have established before us and implement them and fully fund the operating costs for housing first. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Members, any questions?